everyone welcome to worship this morning, Good morning. Good morning. on this rather gloomy rainy day but uh, hopefully it's bright in here and it's bright up here and we're ready to worship God today not so bright up here bright in here all right welcome to worship today on the sixth Sunday of Easter we are making our way through the Easter season uh, it is happy Mother's Day to all of you who are thinking about your mothers today uh, for those of you lucky enough to have them here on earth, enjoy your day. And for those of us who, uh, whose mothers are in heaven, we are cherishing beloved memories today. So, uh, just in celebration of that, in celebration of our mothers, by the way, I brought cupcakes. So, for those of us who are here, grab a cupcake. Looks like we might even be able to grab two. And when you eat it today, raise your cupcake memory of your mama okay <laughs> so we'll share those together today welcome to worship again know that God is present with you wherever you are as you prepare your hearts for worship so I invite you to stand and join with me in the call to worship it is based on our scriptures for today and it is on the screen let's stand together We gathered to worship the one who crafted creation out of chaos. Our cries of joy join the anthems of the universe. We gather to lift our praise to the God who gives us voice. We bring the songs which have echoed in our hearts all week long. We gather as the children of God, our joy unbroken in God's love. Young, Young and old, tone deaf and perfect pitch, lift the new, new songs of faith. And our song of faith this morning is He is Exalted.
So as we think about our scripture text today, it sort of follows right along with what we've been talking about in the Gospel of John. But today Jesus makes a bit of a shift. And he talks about uh, his followers not just being followers, but being friends. And he changes kind of the relationship that he has with those disciples as he calls them friends. And he talks to them about loving others as he has loved them. And so as we think about our time of prayer today, I have a response for you. And during our prayer, I hope that I will uh, cue you to say, may we love as you love. As we're talking to God, as God loves all people, and we talk about that, God, may we love as you love. So try that with me. May we love as you love as we gather for our time of prayer today. Let's be in an attitude and a spirit of prayer. Holy God, before even time, you named us. Through time, you redeem us. You call us precious in your sight, and we pray together. May we love as you love. Holy One, through the turbulent waters, make us steady. Your hands holding strong the fragile and the weak, and we pray together. May we love as you love. Gracious God, may the fruits of our lives be food for the hungry, bread, clothing, shelter, water, and we pray together, may we love as you love. God of justice, remove whatever it is in our lives that keep us from hearing and following your call, and we pray together, may we love as you love. Loving God, take this day our fears, our worries, our distractions and all, Turn them into wheat, heart food, love for our brothers and sisters, and we pray together, may we love as you love. God, give us the strength to love one another in wider circles than we know, and maybe even are comfortable with, and we pray together, may we love as you love, and let us continue to pray together the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. So you may have guessed the theme. <laughs> may we love as God loves, or as Christ loves. And we'll think about that in our scripture. Before we get to the John passage, though, I want to share with you the psalm of the day. Okay? And the psalm of the day that goes along with our scripture is Psalm 98. And I just want to read it for you. So just quiet your hearts and listen as I read Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. He has won a mighty victory by his power and holiness. The Lord has announced his victory and has revealed his righteousness to every nation. He has remembered his promise to love and to be faithful to Israel. The whole earth has seen the salvation of God. And you know this part. Shout to the Lord. Is it up there? Oh, in here. Say that with me then. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break out in praise and sing for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord the King. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the earth and all living things join in. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord. For the Lord is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations 
with fairness. What a good song. All right, our gospel lesson. Following right along with uh, where we left off last week, you'll remember the analogy of I am the vine and you are the branches. This just goes, there's no break in this conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples. It just goes right on from there. After Jesus talks about the vine and the branches and bearing much fruit, and he goes on to say, in starting with verse 9, I have loved you, even as the Father has loved me. So remain in my love. When you obey me, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father and remain in his love. I've told you this so that you will be filled with joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I command you to love each other in the same way that I love you. And here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for their friends. You are my friends. If you obey me, I no longer call you servants because a master doesn't confide in his servants. Now you are my friends. Since I have told you everything the Father told me, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever, ask, whatever you ask for using my name. I command you to love each other. A definite shift in the message of Jesus to his disciples, a much more personal shift to that relationship. So I want you to picture with me back in the day when you were in school, maybe even elementary, I don't know, and, and, and picture with me that age-old tradition that you had of choosing sides for a team. Now, as I'm looking at, the, at, at us, I think we're, we're all sort of in that, that, that era of two people, usually the strong ones, usually the athletes, usually chosen by the teacher, two people standing on one side, the rest of us standing over here, just waiting, waiting and waiting for our turn to be called. And what happens when, that, when in that scenario? What happens first? Who gets picked first? The, fastest. the athletes always got picked first. <laughs> the fastest, the most athletic kids, they're always chosen first. And then, you know, then there's the weakest Kids always waiting till last, till their name is chosen. For me, I was kind of a middle-of-the-road kid. Kind of a tomboy, not real athletic, but yeah, kind of a tomboy. I fell somewhere in the middle. I've sort of stayed somewhere in the middle, honestly, for the, pretty much the rest of it. But anyway, I, I was sort of somewhere in the middle. But I always did have a soft spot for those who had to wait till the end. And why the adults let this kind of team choosing go on like that? That's an emotional scar, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I hope they don't do that anymore. But anyway, this example that I'm giving you, that we all know and have been part of, is a perfect example for this scripture today. Perfect example. Because human life is like that. We have to choose, and we get to choose who we're going to play with. And we get to choose who we're going to work with and who we're going to live with and who we're going to be compatible with. But then you look at this conversation between Jesus and his disciples and you see that life in Christ is absolutely, totally the opposite. He chose us. Did you catch that in scripture? You didn't choose me. I chose you. He chose us. He has made the choice to live with us and in us despite our shortcomings, despite our weaknesses. We who would be chosen last are chosen first by Christ. 
And that's the key to this scripture today. And as we continue on, we've been, we've been looking at this scripture for a couple of weeks now. The key to this scripture today is that Christ has chosen us and asked us to play on his team. To ask us to be on his side. We did not choose him. He sought us out. He recruited us, as it were. Not by coercion, but with loving care. Because he believes in us. Out of concern that we get to know him. Enjoy fellowship together. Out of love. And everything we do, this is written in bold in my notes. Everything that we do as people of faith is in response to that action. Everything that we do as people of faith is in response to being chosen by Christ. We are called, we are chosen, we are cherished by the one who created that. What an honor and a privilege that is. So we continue this week with the second part of the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John. And once again, we hear the call to abide in Christ as Christ abides in us. Once again, we hear about the power and the freeing nature of Christ's love for us. And once again, we hear how communities of faith are supposed to interact and support, and yes, for our purpose today, love one another. Again, we hear that call to love one another. This reading gives us the closest relationship of Jesus and his disciples that we get throughout Scripture. He's chosen them, knowing their flaws, knowing their weaknesses, knowing their characters. He knew which of them would deny him. He knew which of them would hand him over. He knew which one of them would bribe the others. He knew that all of them would disappear at some point along the way and not surface again until they were forced to deal with him after the resurrection. He knew that. And these are the famous last words of Jesus to his friends. The famous last words of Jesus. I don't call you servants, I call you friends. Ah, oh, wouldn't that be great last words to have somebody say to you? In these last words of Jesus, the Lord bears his soul to, the, to his friends. What a distinction. A servant doesn't know what his, master of what his master is doing, as Jesus points out. Friends, on the other hand, are absolutely open and honest with each other. And Jesus said, I've made everything known to you. I've kept no secrets from you. You know everything. I've told you everything. And most important of all, friends value each other's lives as much as they value their own. They are willing to lay down their life for their friends, Jesus says. And I'm convinced that even though we get to choose our teammates, our roommates, our friends, our favorite foods, even our church preferences, I'm convinced that God and Christ, through Christ, has removed that decision about choosing us. He's removed that decision of whether or not we're going to be God's people. He says that. You're going to be my people, and I'm going to be your God. And when Jesus took up the cross, he did so because he'd already made that choice to redeem the world from sin and give us a second chance. God has chosen to put you on God's team. Not by anything you did or didn't do, but because he loves you. And yet God has extended that same invitation to people all over the world. And with that invitation to become God's people, there is also that option for people to walk away from that. That's a choice that you have. Some people have walked away from the team. Some prefer not to enter this divine relationship. I was reading this statistic about People, how fast people are walking away from the church these days. Oh, not these days, like the last 40 years. 
And now 2.7 million people a year walk away from participation in the church. And then COVID hit, and COVID hit while the church was standing right here on the edge of the cliff anyway, and then COVID came along like a joker and booted them off the edge. But I still believe, I still believe that somewhere in the depths of the human heart, whether it's in a building or not, maybe it's a forgotten verse of scripture or maybe it's a familiar song, I still believe that thoughts of Jesus resurface from time to time in people's hearts. That somewhere deep within us, we know that we have that friendship with Christ. He promised it. It's there. Christ is like the captain of the team, and we don't have to worry about being chosen last. We love one another. We serve God together by showing and telling others that they too have been chosen for God's team. Even though I make mistakes, even though I walk down uncertain paths sometimes, the fact still remains that Jesus laid down his life for me, for you. And when you stray, he's still there, welcoming you back into his loving presence without question. Well, the prayer continues on. This, this continues on for several more chapters. And in chapter 17 of John, which I don't know is, if we'll actually get to that in our Easter series, but in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus goes to God in prayer for his disciples. Not only has he established this friend relationship with them, he goes to God in prayer and prays for them. Read the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus intercedes earnestly with his fathers that his followers may be one. That's a prayer from Jesus to God, make these people get along. <laughs> make these people one, just as you and I are one. And he prays that we will love each other as God has loved us. This love is so important today, folks, as we are facing conflicts across this globe, politically, ideologically, militarily, religiously, we need to understand this passage of scripture now. It is relevant now. More than ever, love one another. It's not rocket science. I think that ought to be printed on everybody's mirror. Love, period, one, period, another. Period. We are called to show this world that they'll know that we are Christians by our love. Christ loved us and that love is never ending. And that love is life changing for those of us who call ourselves Christians. It's what drives us, it's what urges us, it's what pushes us, it's what inspires us to go out into the community and share God's love with all we meet. And I pray that we will strive to love one another as Christ has loved us and to live out that love in everything that we say and we do. God commands us to love one another. It's a command. It's like God commanding fish to swim or God commanding birds to fly. It's like God commanding daffodils to be beautiful. When God commands us to love as God's love, God is simply commanding us to be the kind of people that we were created to be in the first place. May we strive to love one another as Christ loves us and to live out this love in all that we say and do. Let's pray about that. Gracious God, it's not difficult. We hear Jesus talking to his disciples, calling them friends, telling them to love one another. It's the same call to us. Help us to be better friends. Help us to love one another in wider circles. And help us to live out that love so that others can see it and know it and want to experience it. Guide us as we try earnestly to serve you 
and love others as you have loved us, we pray in your name. Amen. <coughs> so we take that scripture, and we take that conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples, and we shift it into this room, to this table, and we think about that scripture, and we think about the ones before it, the vine, the branches, the good shepherd, all of those, and we think about these last words of Jesus. You can imagine them sitting around that table in the upper room, and Jesus is sharing these words with him that you and I have read over the last couple of weeks, these last words to his disciples. And the last words that Jesus had on that night when they were gathered around that table the last thing he said to them was, love one another. Every time we come to this table, we are reminded of those famous last words. Every time we gather for worship in our tradition, we gather around a table. It is central to who we are as disciples of Christ because it represents that all are welcome and all are loved and all come at God's invitation. So I invite you to this table remembering those last words of Jesus as if they were spoken to you. Love one another. And appropriately enough, Fred has chosen for our communion hymn, our scripture song, they'll know we are Christians by our love. unfolds and all this new life begins, we see God's presence all around us. The earth is being nourished right now while we're about to be nourished. So let us rejoice with gratitude at this Holy Communion table. Let us pray. Gracious God, here at this table or home in our own worship space, we are in the company of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. You have revealed your loving ways to us in broken bread and a poured cup. Lord Jesus, you are a special friend to all of us. We thank you for the coming to us, for giving yourself to us, and we ask you to help strengthen us in mind and heart. Stay close as you bless all of us children in your loving care. Remind us of the importance of friendships and help us to nurture and care for one another. Now as your light has illuminated our lives, help us be a light for others. Forgive us for any thoughts or deeds that may not be in loving spirit, and be our guide as we move forward. Fill us now with the power of your spirit that we may share that with others. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he said to his disciples, eat of this bread, and as you do so, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same way Jesus took the cup, he blessed it, and he said, this is the blood of my new covenant, and as you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. Let us take of our communion together.
As always, it's been good to worship together today. Uh, as always, if you want to offer a specific prayer, we'll hang out just a little bit and offer that right after church is over. So that will be happening. Um, and be sure to take a cupcake on your way out. Um, so this morning, we were just sort of goofing around in here before anybody was in here. And I said, I asked Fred if these two instruments were tuned together. And so we were just sort of goofing around and uh, before, before, that's what happens before the crowd comes, you know. We sort of goof around sometimes. And so we were goofing around with the closing song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. And so we'll share with you what we were goofing around doing as we stand and sing, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus.
benediction. Just as God's word was sent into the world to heal and redeem, so God sends you into the world this day to be light and love, healing and hope for all that you meet. Go now and be the light of the world, and may the grace and peace of God the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer come upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.